<clears throat> well, good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. This sunny, summery, I mean, it's not even hot in here. Good morning. And good morning to you all online, and welcome to our first service in June, our June 6th service and annual meeting, of course, today to follow the service. So if you are a member, please remember to stick around afterwards because we're going to have our annual meeting. So before we get to going too far with uh, words of welcome or announcements that I have, does anyone out there have any words of welcome or announcements that they would like to share? <clears throat> yes, Deborah, come on up. Welcome, everybody. And especially, um, there's at least one new face in church today, and that's Richard. And he's been with us on Zoom, but his camera on his computer never worked so the mysterious Richard is appearing today alive and in person welcome to church <laughs> well at least that's one we got <clears throat> we got one mystery solved <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so other words of welcome or announcements. Welcome very much, Richard. Thank you. Yeah, Marty, come on up. Just a reminder that we're having our spring cleanup this coming sun next Sunday, and it's from 1 to 3, June 13th. And if you got a rake, you should bring it. We need it. And if you have a trailer, we might need to borrow a couple trailers too. So just let me know or let the office know. Thank you. Yes, one to three next Sunday, the 13th, spring cleanup, uh, summer cleanup. <laughs> but many hands make light work, so please do come and volunteer. Any other words of welcome or announcements? If you're online, if you want to unmute yourself if you have one. Well, I do have a sad announcement that you've all heard about Jeannie Meyer passing away. Uh, her funeral will be here at the church at 2 p.m. There is no visitation. Uh, they will be having a reception afterwards, though, um, bars and cookies and coffee and things in the fellowship hall. Tuesday, yep, at 2 p.m., yep. And then I have a fun announcement that next Sunday is annual meeting, well, next weekend is annual meeting for the UCC. And what they're doing this year is instead of them having worship separately as part of annual meeting and us having worship here separately, is they're having a statewide worship service on Sunday morning via Zoom or YouTube or Facebook Live, or Vimeo rather, or Facebook Live. And so I have, <clears throat> and this will be sent out to you as well via email or letter if you don't get email, but next Sunday church here is at 10 a.m. So that's a little bit of a change. <clears throat> I hope that fits your schedule. If you come at if you come at 9:30, you'll be fine. It'll just be early. That's all. So, <clears throat> but church will be here at 10 a.m. and we'll be broadcasting it up on the screen. And we're gonna join in church with the entire conference next Sunday uh, as part of that. And so we'll, again, we'll send that out. But as part of annual meeting weekend next Sunday. Church will be at 10 a.m. Uh, there won't be the normal, uh, some of the elements like children's message or things like that, but there will be <clears throat> a wonderful message, excuse me, the Reverend Dr. Karen Georgia Thompson will be giving a wonderful sermon that Sunday. So, <clears throat> And if you can't join us live, we will have a link that we'll send out to it on Vimeo so that you can watch it when you want to. 
So again, I'll let you all know about that. But we've had so much going on, I didn't want to confuse people about which annual meeting and what time and everything. So <clears throat> again, 10 a.m. next Sunday will be our worship service. Yes, Deborah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you need to attend from home or would like to, uh, I will send out the link normally like we do every week uh, for the Zoom link and all of that. All right. I think that's it for announcements for me. Are there any other words of welcome or announcements that I perhaps inspired in anyone? Then let us begin our worship today by centering ourselves with this moment of reflection. Will you please rise as you are able and let us join in our call to worship together. This will be printed in your bulletin or words on your screen. You'll recognize this from the hymn, We Are the Church. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. We are many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. And when the people gather, there's singing, there's praying, there's laughing, and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And let us, as the church together, join in our prayer of invocation. We thank you, living God, that through Jesus Christ you have built a church, not made with human hands, but bound by the love among your children. We thank you that you have called us and that we are forever yours. We come here today longing to know the touch of your Holy Spirit, the peace of our Savior, and the unconditional love of God Almighty. May we be enlivened and renewed through our worship today to serve you in the world. Come and be present with us as we sing songs of praise and lift hearts full of rejoicing. As we gather together and are sent out, may everything we do reveal to the world the love of Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is called as partners in Christ's service. We'll sing verses 1 through 3. Words will be on your screen or in your hymnal packet, called as partners in Christ's service.
Please be seated. As we continue worshiping together, let us now join in our prayer of confession. We have promised to live as your people, God, yet we confess that we'd fail you and each other. We do not honor one another as we should. As the body of Christ, we are often clumsy and disjointed. We do not work together as one for your glory. In fact, we often ignore the cries for help in the voices of the poor and hungry, and thus are not faithful to the trust you have placed in us. Merciful God, receive us as we are and forgive us. Encourage us with your love that we may commit ourselves anew to live as you have called us to live and love as you have loved us. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, indeed. Hear now these words of assurance. Hear this good news. In Christ, we learn God's love is boundless. In Christ, we are forgiven and born anew. In Christ, we are eternally saved. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now come to a moment where we're going to share in God's peace with one another. You'll notice at the beginning today, we didn't zoom the camera around and show everyone um, because you all were visiting so well and, uh, and people were coming in online. But we're going to do it now as we share in a moment of peace. And so as we here share in peace together, in present and in person, we share with you all peace wherever you may be and however you may be joining us and whenever you may be joining us. And so let us all stand up as we're able and do something new as we share a moment of peace. And let's all look to the screen or to the camera back where Ayla is and back here. And let's all say on the count of three, God's peace be with you. One, two, three. God's peace be with you. <laughs> Amen. Peace, everyone. <laughs> and indeed, may God's peace be with us all. <laughs> <laughs> and as we continue with the peace of Christ in our hearts, we continue now with Holy Scripture being read today by Mary Jean. Thank you, Mary Jean. Good morning. Our first scripture today is Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and for your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. 
you increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though, though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 4, 13 through 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the reading for today. Our second hymn for us today is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. And we are going to sing all the verses. I know in the program it says verses 1 through 3, but we are going to sing all four. So, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. And if you follow along on your screen, you'll be right online. Thank you. 
And now it's time for the children's message. So children, if you'd like to come forward, or those who are young at heart. We don't ever get too many with the young at heart one. <laughs> young at heart, old of knees, huh? <laughs> Good morning. How are you all? I'm doing well. We invite you here today. Are there anyone joining us online? Okie dokie, it's just you three. You get to answer all the questions today. Are you ready? Did you take notes? Okay, what is this? A table, yeah. And what is it more generally and symbolically? Holy communion table, right? And what do we do when we come to this table? You take bread and you drink of what? Cup or water or juice or <clears throat> some traditions, wine, whatever it may be. All right, so we got the basics down. We got a table, we've got bread, we've got a cup. But it means something more, doesn't it? And I love that every time we do communion, we get a chance to talk about this. Because what does this table mean that is so much more than just a table or a cup or a piece of bread? What's that, Nora? Yeah, it's the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we, that we remember, right? And why is that important to us? Because he filled us with new life through this sacrifice, right? And so we come to this table, and we take of bread and we take of cup. And we do so so that we're renewed and we're refilled. And there's a big term that we are what? Starts with for, for, forgiven, yes. We are forgiven through this sacrifice. And without it, we are not. And so it's so important we come here. Which brings me to my, my ultimate question for today. What is this out front? A welcome mat. Wait a second, that doesn't normally go with a table like this, does it? Where does your welcome mat usually go? In front of a door, right? Well, what does a door do? It opens you up to a house, it can open you up to all sorts of things, right? Well, here's, we're gonna blow your minds today. What if this welcome mat opens us to a door of possibilities through this table, right? Can you, can you imagine that? Now, if a door is closed and locked, can you get in with a key? We've got such smart youth in our church. We're so very blessed. Yes, with a key, absolutely. And, <clears throat> and the key is found on our table for this one, for this purpose. That's a different children's sermon for a different day, Ayla. <laughs> the key in the locked door. But this is a welcome mat to the open door of this table and this sacrifice. And when the door is open and there's a welcome mat outside, who can come in? Anyone. Everyone. And that is what is ultimately so important about this table. Now here's the final thing for today. And I know you guys have answered a lot of questions already. But what is your purpose at this table? And I don't mean ours as the faith community. I mean yours, you three, and whoever is joining us online. What is your purpose at this table as the children of our church? To welcome people in? Absolutely. But what else is your purpose in this church? To follow Jesus Christ, amen? You guys are doing great. But what is your purpose in this church? To believe? 
your purpose is to grow and learn and take all of these things and to keep this door open. Amen? So you can do all of those things that you were talking about. Help people believe, share the love of Christ, and be this meal to all of the people in the world. Now I know that we spent a lot of time on this, but I think it's important because you are the future. And you are the people that when we're <clears throat> not just old in knees, but we're old in heart at some point as well, that you will be the ones carrying it forward. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly God, who indeed this table has been prepared by, we thank you so much that you have given us a welcome mat. You have given us an open door. And you have given us grace through your bread and your cup. We thank you so much for the future of our church standing here right before our eyes, that they indeed would carry this forward, that they would indeed, God, believe and trust in you, and that no matter what happens, they would know that they were always welcome back to your table. It's in your beloved name we pray. Amen. Thank you. How about a round of applause for our kids? <clears throat> our scripture reading today, our gospel reading today, comes from the book of Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 19 and 31 through 35. Jesus went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve whom he also named apostles to be with him, and, he sent, and to be sent out to proclaim the message and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus and Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then, <clears throat> then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, whose word is often mysterious, please open our heart and our ears to your message. Open us up to what you long for us to know and understand and hear. And as always, God, may our worship and praise bring glory to your name. Amen. Calling all disciples. What do you all see on the picture there? A church. A church? Our church. First United Church. The lawn all taken care of, thanks to Marty. This is before we put on our fourth roof. <laughs> this is our church. And I, I want to talk today about discipleship in our church because this weekend is, today is annual meeting. And it's very important that we understand when Jesus is calling these disciples, what that means, not just to them, but to us. First of all, I'm sure you're all glad that you didn't have to lead, read this list of names that were in there, but 
How would you like to be called by Jesus a son or daughter of thunder? Wouldn't that be cool? Like to be called a uh, Boanerges or Boanerges? And then Jesus, you know, likes to change all of his disciples' names, it seems like, because Simon shows up and he changes it to Peter, you know. So, all kidding aside, though, Jesus calls these disciples up to this place in this room where he's at. And it's important that we understand what and why Jesus calls them. And there's three things that we hear Jesus calls them for. And why it's important is because it matters for us as well. The very first thing that Jesus does is he calls the disciples to be with him. And that may just seem like a little passing verbiage in the Bible that is included in there to say, of course he called them to be with him. He didn't have a telephone. He couldn't call them that way. They had to be with him. But the inherent in those words, Jesus calling the disciples to be with him, is a call for us to be with him. A call for us to actually take the time in our lives to slow down, and when Jesus calls, we answer. We go. We are with him. And that's a very important thing, I think, for our day and age. Because we pack so much into our schedules. And I say that as a parent who is running from baseball tournament to baseball tournament and from softball practice to softball practice and music lesson to music lesson and from church activity to church activity is that we sometimes jam too much in, right? So when Jesus calls, we answer. And we go and spend time with him. When Jesus calls all the disciples, the second thing he says is that he called them <clears throat> to proclaim the good news. Do you all know what the good news is? Sure you do. You're like, um, we've been coming here, and if we don't know, it's actually your fault, Tony, because <clears throat> you're the one who's supposed to be telling us, right? Yes, the good news that Christ died to save our souls and that our God is a God of love. A love that is for all people and a love that is free and open for all those who believe. The good news that Christ lived, Christ died, Christ was resurrected, and Christ will come again. We are called by Jesus to proclaim that. We aren't called by Jesus to sit quietly with it. We aren't called by Jesus to come on Sunday for an hour and get our, daily, our weekly dose of good news and then go about our week. We are called by Jesus to proclaim it. But there's good news in the proclamation of the good news. I've often wondered why does Jesus, why do we have this list of all the disciples that came? Why do we have these 12 listed here in this passage? And the important reason that I have in my sermation have come to is we need to know that there was 12 different people that came to be with Jesus and that were told to proclaim the good news. Because just like here there's 40, 50 different people. We're all going to proclaim that good news in the way that Jesus calls us to. See, Jesus doesn't call those disciples to say, you must proclaim the good news from the center of town and shout as you're hanging on to the lamppost that Christ has died to save your sins and you are all forgiven. Maybe he has. But Christ has called each of us as disciples to proclaim in the way that we are gifted with, that we are called with, that God has intended for us to do. Perhaps it's opening the door for someone at the grocery store 
And when they say, you didn't need to do that, you say, well, yes, I did. Have a great day. Maybe it's pulling up and having someone cut in you in front of you at traffic, and instead of laying on your horn and shaking your fist at them and maybe other things, it's saying a prayer. They maybe they're in a hurry. Maybe that's the good news. Maybe you don't feel comfortable with people or you don't feel comfortable going out, but you are wonderful at writing letters and sending cards. That is sharing the good news with one another. And maybe all of that sounds completely foreign to you. And you're thinking, I don't even know how I share the good news. Well, then that's a good question to bring to Jesus. The last thing in this list of three things, <clears throat> when Jesus sends out the APB and he's calling all disciples, right? Is that we are called by Jesus to cast out demons. <laughs> Whoa. Take a step back, right? Casting out demons? We're supposed to be doing that? Casting out demons. Now, there are the literal demons that exist in the Bible that we have heard the stories about, that exorcism and casting those out, and that is stuff that happens. But I think this is listed for a deeper purpose. So hear me out. When we cast out the demons of hate and instead welcome people with love and kindness and open arms, are we not exercising the Spirit? When we cast out the demons of injustice and we help people to know that we don't just live in equality, but we live with equanimity, that they can have the same piece of pie that I have, and that the pie doesn't shrink, but it stays the same, if not grows, is that not exercising our spirit? When we cast out the demons of intolerance for other colors, other cultures, other races or creeds or sects or whatever it may be, and we accept those people as God's created people, are we not exercising our spirit? See, Jesus calls us to cast out the demons. Jesus calls us to proclaim the good news. And Jesus calls each of us to be with Him. Because there's one vital opponent component to why Jesus calls all of the disciples. Jesus is not here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here and here and all around in all of the emotional and spiritual ways that we can imagine. But Jesus is not here. We are here. We are the disciples of Christ. We are the hands and feet that Jesus has called. We are the people that need to go and be with Jesus and be fulfilled and come and be renewed at this table. And then we need to go out and proclaim the good news and exercise the demons of our world. Jesus calls all of us to this place. Jesus calls all of us. And we include this passage about who is the mother and brother of Christ, not to offend Mary or those who would be offended that Jesus would disregard his bloodline family, but to further hammer home the point that you all, I, and 
born in this world who does the will of God is a brother or sister or mother of Christ. Because we have all been called as disciples. And so, when Jesus calls, let us be with him. When he fills your heart with a moment to do something good, to share good news with someone, proclaim it openly and vibrantly. And when you see the demons of our society holding people back from even being able to access this table or being able to know the love of God, then I implore you to do your best to share God's will with them as a brother or sister in Christ. We are the hands and feet of the love of God. And God is calling all disciples. Let us pray. God, indeed, you bring us here today as your disciples, as the disciples of Christ who come here to learn about you, to hear about you, to be enlivened by you, and to be sent forth. But God, our world is a weary place. It is a place that is full of all of the things that would hold us back. Dare we even say it is full of evil. And we are scared sometimes. We are afraid if we're honest. And we don't feel worthy. So burst those things open, God, and remind us that we are loved by you. We are forgiven by you. We are empowered by you. And we are called by you to proclaim your good news, the good news of salvation upon the cross, the good news of a love that is eternal and unconditional. And give us the strength when we lack it, the hope when our hearts are weary, the peace when everything seems to be chaotic, and the love when we do not feel love, to go forth and to be what you need us to be in this world. And as we come here today, God, we do lift up thanks that you have brought us once more here to be with each other, to be with our church, and to be called as one of your disciples. But as we come today, perhaps there are prayers in our community that need to be shared, so I want to ask if you have a prayer to share, that you would please come up to the microphone and share it, or if you are online, that you would unmute yourself and share it there. Good morning. I spoke with uh, Craig Pooler yesterday, and many of you know that Craig was involved in a severe motorcycle accident a few weeks ago. He was struck from behind at highway speed while he was making a turn. Uh, he sustained facial fractures. He had a spine fracture, required a fusion. He had a pelvic fracture that did not require surgery, but he's doing well. He's alive because he wore his helmet. So anyway, he thanks us uh, for our prayers. Hopes he'll be back someday to see us.
I have a prayer request to have us pray for Barb Shane family. Barb passed away from complications of COVID. This is Amanda Lodd's aunt. Other prayers of the community. I, of course, want to lift up the Jeannie Meyer family as we gather this week for a funeral that we would just hold the whole family in our prayers. And I want to lift up a prayer of gratitude, uh, foreshadowing gratitude for our annual meeting today. I know it may sound strange to be grateful for an annual meeting, but it means another year together, all of us together. And that is something to be darn grateful for. Hearing no further prayers, let us now join in silence as we let God reach our thoughts that perhaps are too deep for words. And let us join all of our prayers together as we stand, as we are able, in mind, body, or spirit, and join in the Lord's Prayer song. Indeed, as our children spoke about earlier this morning, this table that we come to today is an open table at First United Church. We say that wherever you are, whoever you are, and whatever you are on your journey, you are welcome here. 
at this table of sacrifice, at this table of love. Let us now sing in our invitational hymn, As We Gather at Your Table. Let us now join together in our communion prayer. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. <clears throat> we rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people everywhere, that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and die on the cross for us, to be raised from death on the third day, and then to live in glory forever. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered with your sons and daughters of faith in all places and times. We praise you with joy. Amen. Amen, indeed. And on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he met with the disciples in the upper room, and in meeting with them, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he shared it with him, and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, at the meal, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, 
And in pouring it out for the disciples, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink of this and do so in remembrance of me. When we eat of this bread, when we drink of this cup, we are once again uniting in the covenant that Christ lived, Christ died, Christ was resurrected, and Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy God, consecrate this meal to our bodies. Fill our bones with strength, our hearts with purpose, and our lives with peace as we long to be yours, as we long to be known, as we long to have our sins forgiven and live grace-filled lives. May this meal, may this bounty do just that, and may your Holy Spirit fill each of our days. It's in your holy name, all God's people pray, amen. <clears throat> The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of Jesus. <clears throat> the cup of sacrifice poured out for you, take and drink of it and do so in remembrance of Jesus. When we come forward today, we still have our contactless communion. I will be handing each person one as you come forward. And so please, if you see that there's not a lot of people up here, please come forward. But Maxine is going to play some nice music. So feel free to take your time and be welcomed to this table. The meal is prepared. Let us share in this table of love.
Let us now, as we are able, <clears throat> join in our prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, bountiful God, for the gift of grace in the splendor of this holy meal. Strengthen our faith, increase our love, and send us into the world rejoicing as we sing, Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed are we, thanks to the eternal love and grace of our Savior. Amen. We now come to Holy Offering, a time for us indeed to give back out of all of the grace and gifts that Christ has shared with us. Again, we call this Holy Offering for many reasons. One is that when we give to the church out of what God has given us, it indeed is a Holy Offering as we are giving back the gifts to extend the gifts. Gifts come in many sizes and in different ways. Gifts can indeed be monetary, and if that is how you brought your gift today, we have stations set up around the church. Just look for the nearest tray. If your gift is to share a moment of prayer for those who need it, or for just our world in general, then that is a wonderful gift as well, because there is indeed a power in prayer. And if you have received a gift today of God placing on your heart a way of discipleship, a way of call, a way of purpose, then I would just ask that you talk to God, spend a moment in prayer, figure out what that gift is, because there is no greater gift in the world than to indeed be the hands and feet of Jesus. This is our holy offering. Will you please rise as you are able in mind, body, or spirit. Let us join in our doxology together. Let us join now in our prayer of dedication. Generous God, take our gifts this day and use them so that we may be part of your great work. Through our giving, bring justice and love closer to all, not just those in our community, but in the world beyond these walls. 
Strengthen our church and your world that all may come to know healing and peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today, We All Are One in Mission, is a new one for us. So we're going to have Maxine play through it once so you can all get kind of how it goes. And then we'll all join in in learning a new hymn this morning. We all are one in mission. A reminder before we leave, annual meeting will be following directly after this, so maybe we'll give people a little time for a restroom break if need be or something like that, but then we will begin shortly after the service. So, brothers and sisters of Christ, fellow disciples of Christ, let us indeed go forth with the many gifts that God has given each of us, united in one call to share the love of God, to proclaim the good news, and to be the hope that this world needs. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.